Welcome. Today, I'm going to be able to tell you the lineup for the Tudor Online History Festival, the speaker lineup. It's very exciting. So I'm very excited to do that. Um, and tell you a little bit more about who I've been interviewing, who I'm about to be interviewing, how you can get involved if you want to. So let's let's get on. Thank you so much. I am streaming live as usual on Instagram, YouTube and Facebook. Thank you to everyone who manages to join me live. Welcome. Um, pop a hello in the comments. Let me know where you're watching from. Um, you can do that whichever uh, place you're watching. Also, welcome to you if you're in the catch up crew and if you're listening on the podcast I don't know if you you lot who join me live know that you can actually catch up on the podcast later and you can get links to all of those things so you don't have to go looking you can get a link to all of those things on my sub stack which is philippa b philippa with one l and two p's b dot sub stack dot com um <laughs> we're back um Casto is over there in the US. Ka uh, Katie, how are you doing? Heidi over there in the Netherlands, welcome. Hi, everybody joining on Instagram. Um, trying to get the comments up rather than... It, it always gives me the option to block you. That's not what I'm trying to do. Gloho over there in San Diego, California, welcome. Uh, Becky in, Can in Kansas. Oh, of course, my first experience of Kansas was, of course, the... Uh, um, Yellow Brick Road, what's it called? Uh, uh, film. Monica, watching on Facebook in Italy. How are you doing? Ciao. Um, Coleraine, N Norn Iron. Where's that? Soram. I don't know where that is. Hi, um, in California. Argentina, sweet Marie Noel. Welcome. So, yeah, so today I'm going to be able to finally tell you the full lineup. Uh, Robin's in Texas. Howdy. I can't do it, can I? Oh, I need to, I need to channel my inner Toy Story. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to add uh, uh, Pontefract. Ponte Carlo, Miss Laney. <laughs> just trying to just rename it. Um, uh, Deborah Reed is in Pennsylvania. Welcome. Uh, Belinda in Canada. Um, Edith, I'm not Philippa Gregory. I wish I was. I'd be a lot richer. Um, Isabel uh, in Peru, welcome. Uh, oh, Northern Ireland. Oh, I see. North, right, I get you. I get you. Um, uh, Brazil, Edith. Sheehan, so good to see you too. So, um, Linda, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Linda's uh, Tudor Rose. Um, you can't quite see that on, on Instagram, but behind me, um, that is Linda's. Linda did that for me. Linda was with me almost a year ago now on the Anne Boleyn tour um, and did me that beautiful, beautiful embroidery behind me. Um, MJ in Hamilton, Ontario, welcome. Lottie, just in London. Just in London. People would kill to be in London. <laughs> but yeah, I know what you mean. Um, uh Amy's 27 at Saturday. I would be excited if I turned 27 at Saturday. I'm a little bit past that now. Um, but I am getting excited because we're near to the coronation, aren't we? Uh, that's on the 6th of May. Um, if any of you are interested, I do have some merch if you want anything with the coronation logo on. I have um, set that up on my on my shop, which you can get to via the links on um what's it called, Linktree, I'm in my bio. Um, and it's now less than four weeks till my first on, you know, on the ground, feet on the ground tour, which is the Anne Boleyn tour, which um, Linda was on last year. Um, Dorothy, welcome, thank you. Oh, greetings from a rainy Poland. We're just grey still, grey, bit of sunshine. Really want it to warm up, not too much, warm up ready for the tour. Um, it's got till the 16th of, uh, of May when we meet. 15th would be nice. Heidi, I'm a lot past 27. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm with you. Um, I think it's probably good. I think I'm probably a better person than I was when I was 27. I don't know. <laughs> but um, so anyway, so we're not far off. I'm really looking forward to the tour. Now, look, did any of you see these? I'm so chuffed with these. These are every every tour I do, 
I um I buy everyone, buy everyone a, t- a travel diary, and this was inspired by my um my school trips myself. We used to, I used to go away with a band. If any of you watches um, follows me on Instagram, you'll know I've I've I restarted playing the clarinet. I've got the clarinet out of the cupboard. It's been in there about 18 years since before my son was born. And um, and I've got it out. But I was part of a, a school woodwind orchestra. I travelled to America a couple of times, New York and St. Louis. We went to Italy. Anyway, you'd have a programme for um, for our concerts and, and everyone would sign them. And, of course, it's a brilliant memento. And I had in my mind about these when I started running tours. So I... I I now provide travel diaries. They're just they're blank so that people can write down their, whatever they want, a diary of their travels, just keep it for stationary later. Um, we have a lot of talks during tours so they can write notes. And this, t- and I've, well, I also provide a pen, but I've got a little Amberlynn tour pen as well. This is what Catherine Holman um, the uh, has illustrated for me. So how cute is that? I'm so chuffed with those. Everyone on the tour will get one. And if you've been on the Amberlynn tour um, before, there's there's a load of other souvenirs and stuff that you can get now with this on, it's, which is really cool. So um, uh, Lally Poppy, good morning. And Katie, Katie still has her travel diary from last year. There's just so, I, I love it. And then everyone, you know, if they want to take each other's phone numbers or whatever. You know, so I'm, I'm really chuffed with those. We're looking forward to giving those out. So it won't be long. If you're not lucky enough to be on the tour with us, follow along on um, Instagram. Obviously, if you're a member of my Patreon, you'll get a bit more, a few more behind the scenes things. Um, but yeah, just just follow along. So I am now, I don't know, three hours into filming today because I have just finished uh, an interview, which you'll be able to see in oh only a few weeks time actually um with julian humphreys about the battle of chooksbury now this you might think oh battle oh boring this was this was in my opinion could definitely be described as the final battle in the wars of the roses with the caveat of course that it's not wasn't known as the wars of the roses during or soon after it's a, a, a title given to it a lot lot uh, later um but the, actually the battle of Tewkesbury could be seen as the the one that concluded the actual fight between the york faction and the lancastrian faction um two uh obviously two uh lines of the same family um Linda says she uses her tour pen all the time, brings back great memories. We'll have to let me know if it runs out and I can send another one. Although I'll see you in September, so you'll be getting another one. Um, so so the Battle of Tewkesbury, the anniversary is on the 6th of May. So you'll be able to see the interview with, with Julie and patrons. Of course, you'll be able to get it um, slightly earlier, um, as well as the extended version. So if you if you um, are a patron, you've been able to put forward your own questions. Linda, in fact, put, put uh, a put forward a very very interesting question about the use of the abbey um after the battle um basically some some of the the losing side the lancastrian side tried to take sanctuary there they weren't allowed to and it's there's a there's a whole story there which will be included in the um in the the patron length interview with julian so that will be out in a few weeks time to coincide with the anniversary of the battle which was the 6th of may took place in 1471 and um, it throws up, for me, preparing for that interview, it threw up an interesting question of was Henry Tudor and the Battle of Bosworth against Richard III, was that actually part of the Wars of the Roses? And we delved into that a little bit. Uh, I delved into that a little bit with Julian. So you'll be able to see the... Um, the, the the answer he gave and my sort of thought process behind uh behind that um hi claudia in new york how are you doing hope you're doing well um so so yeah so so just finished that interview with julian next week i'm interviewing so i have another one so i'm i'm, I'm getting them in before i go on tour and they'll be uh 
published on my YouTube channel and on the podcast um, as we uh, over the next few months. But I'm interviewing uh, Sarah Slater, who is a tour guide at Hampton Court Palace. She actually has taken my tour groups when we've been there. Um, Linda, you will have met uh, Sarah. Now, she um, she's in, she's not. Gosh, I was about to say just a tour guide. In in terms of, it's not her. Um, oh, thank you, Jenna. She likes my blouse. Um, the the level of knowledge of these guides is. I, I, is really in depth. Um, if you are going to these places like Hampton Court, anywhere actually, um, and there are room guides there, pick pick their brains. Have you know? Uh, ask them. They know so much, um, and you get to learn. You get to learn so much by by speaking to them. Um, but Sarah is incredibly knowledgeable. Sarah Slater. Um, and I'm interviewing her next Wednesday. So that will be available um, in, I'm not quite sure yet how the schedule is going to work, but that will be available soon as well. Um, now, if you're a member of my patron, uh, Patreon, I know some of you have already put in your questions. So thank you for that because they now, they've now gone off to Sarah and uh, she's preparing for the interview next week. So that's one of the perks of being a patron. Not only do you get the longer length um, interview, um, you get it ad free, but also if I'm interviewing when I'm when I'm interviewing people you get to um you get to put your own questions to the speaker Amy is that the battle where Margaret of Anjou's son was killed indeed it was so at the battle of Tewkesbury we'll probably talk about this in the week of battle actually but yes um the uh so so the Lancastrian forces the the only son and heir of Henry VI whose wife was Margaret of Anjou, she was, she was there, not on the battlefield, but she was there. Um, uh, so the only son and heir uh, of Henry VI, he, he died at the Battle of Tewkesbury. Um, Lottie Rose, Tewkesbury had some shockingly unethical behaviour from the Yorkists, murdering people after they'd already surrendered after the battle, um, as well as, of course, Henry's son uh, dying, who was 17, we go into that into the in the uh, in well Julian goes into that in the interview. So I think you're going to really enjoy. I've, I, to be fair, I've got. I don't think there's one interview on my YouTube channel with a historian that you're going to be bored by, or and they are all so interesting. Um, hello, Maria. How are you doing? You're not terribly late, darling. No, you're not terribly late. Welcome, welcome. So. The main gist of today is I'm going to be able to tell you who the lineup for the online Tudor festival history festival are going to be i'm not going to reveal yet the talk titles because i want to tell you all six of them uh when i uh, have them confirmed but i do have all um all six speakers confirmed so it's very exciting i'll tell you those in a minute first of all because i forgot last week and i must must thank my newest patrons thank you so much to nancy tamara abby ali louise and carol you've all joined um patreon so you um obviously you have had the chance to have a look but you can know there's a lot of back catalogue now there's a lot of a it's a big library you can look through um and also of course take part in the book club the next book club meeting is on the 21st of may that's just after i get back from the anne boleyn tour we are discussing estelle pronk's um book uh blood fire and gold the dual biography of elizabeth I and uh, catherine de medici so still got time um, to read that, really, if you're uh, if you're interested in joining Patreon and, and becoming part of the book club. It's all it's all it's all um, included. So you can do that. Um, so the speaker lineup. Oh, are you ready? This one's going to be a short one today unless you want to throw me some questions. Um, anyway, so so the 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 Tudor online um, festival is it takes taking place in November, but the tickets are on sale already. It's the 17th till the 19th of November. It's our third online history festival. Um, and you, even if you can't make it that weekend, you will have access to all the talks until the end of January, 2024. So it's not actually, um, I mean, obviously it's lovely if you can make it live we have um two live shows which i'll tell you more about in a moment they're slightly different to the ones we've um, had before um uh 
but you will have access to all of the talks and the recordings of the live shows um, until the end of January. So for two more months after uh, after the actual event. Excuse me, I'm going to have to have a sip of my tea. So, yes, yeah, so the, the lineup is going to be Tracy Borman, of course. Now, Tracy has provided talks for the last two festivals. Um, we did the Stuart Summit and the Georgians last time. By the way, you can get, if you didn't manage to come to either of those, you can buy those talks as a bundle um, on my Buy Me A Coffee, buymeacoffee.com forward slash Philippa. You can buy them there or you can buy them as an addition to your ticket to the Tudors Online Festival. And Tracy, um, because actually Tracy is known for her uh, Tudor or initially, you know, I mean, actually she's, she's doing a lot on monarchy general, you know, the, the, uh, a much, much wider time scale now, but she's really known as being a Tudor historian. And yet she has uh, written about uh, into the Stuart period. Her first book was on Henrietta Howard, who was a mistress of George II. That was who she did her talk about uh, at the Georgians Festival. Um and for the Tudors uh, Festival, she will be talking. I know that I know I can tell you what she'll be talking about because I already know. Um, she will be talking about um, the relationship between Anne Boleyn and her daughter Elizabeth, who would of course be, go on to become Elizabeth the First. So Tracy's talking. Joanne Paul, Dr. Joanne Paul is talking. Now Joanne's book on the House of Dudley, um, we have spoken about on here in in the past, um, and. Actually, there's an interview that all of the speakers there is an interview with actually on my YouTube channel. So that's good. So if you want to check out anyone who you don't, well, either who you've not come across before or who you like to listen to speak, you will be able to go onto my YouTube channel, which is youtube.com forward slash at British History. Um, if you if you just search for it, put in British History Channel in the search box um, on YouTube, because if you just put in British History, it brings up any video that there's ever been about British history. <laughs> so if you put in if you search for British History Channel, then you will find me. It's my face. Makes it easy to find. Um, uh, so. So, yeah, so this so so. So sorry. So Joanne is she's got this amazing book on the House of Dudley, um, which is a it's it's a brilliant it, it obviously it looks at the the Dudleys which as a family in terms of their prominence survived pretty much the same length of time that the Tudors did um so you have the 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 you have um Edmund Dudley sort of coming rising up to power um right through then through the three generations and you have Robert dying without an, an heir and, and his brother dies and anyway so, but it also, while talking about the Dudley family, of course, she covers in detail how they serve the Tudors, and it's like another view into um, the Tudors, the Tudor monarchy as well. So, it's an incredible book, really, really fascinating. It's going to be one of the books we cover in book club this year, actually, um, over on Patreon. Um, and yeah, so Joanne is is doing a talk on the the Dudley women who were pivotal. If you listen to my interview with um, with Joanne, you'll realise how pivotal the women were um, in what ostensibly appeared to be um, uh, relationships between 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 the men or the men and their um, their monarch. Um, so I've got a few questions. Let's have a look. Claudia, do you think Mary Tudor became so harsh because of how Henry treated her mother and, and kept them apart? So, of course, Mary Tudor. So she, this is this is um, Henry VIII's daughter by Catherine of Aragon, their only surviving child who became Mary the first um, after the death of her brother, half brother, Edward VI. So Henry had treated Mary horrendously um and so there's a lot of um there's a lot of bad behavior <laughs> to put it mildly between uh, t t from henry the eighth towards his towards his daughter mary she was around about 17 when her life fell apart and you have to think up until that point everything had been really stable she's got a close relationship with her mother um there's she, she's being brought up as 
in all but actually being invested as Princess of Wales. She has a seat at the Low Castle. Um, she, you know, so, so there's there's things are quite stable. She's looking at probably getting married, and Mary seems to be quite um, sort of. Uh, she she seems to be fine with that idea, um, and it, yeah, she's close to her mother. She has her beliefs, and her her life just falls apart really, really quickly. Um, she ends up being. Um, completely cut off from her mother. They're not allowed to uh, see each other. They're not supposed to converse. Um, she has her new stepmother who who doesn't like her. She has a new baby sister who she's supposed to be a lady in waiting for. She is demoted from being princess to being lady. She is told she's illegitimate. She's told her mother's marriage to her father um, was uh, void uh, null and void she's told that um, everything she everything she knew basically everything she knew is wrong and despite you knowing that it you know that, that you've got your beliefs and you know they're wrong you're going to be forced to publicly admit something different so she did not want to um acknowledge her father as head of the church in England she did not want to um acknowledge that her parents marriage um wasn't a void marriage and that she was um, a bastard in that respect um and she really really stood firm um to the the point where Henry VIII's ministers are you know threatening that they will beat her head until it is soft as apples um soft as baked apples because she won't because she's refusing to to sign um and you can't excuse certain behaviors however of, of mary sort of later on but i think to think that all of that would have no impact would obviously be quite naive uh i think her her treatment by her father that that just the break complete breakdown of her life everything she knew everything she was familiar with um the the emotional trauma of being split she's split really from her father and her mother isn't she she might not be physically split from her father in the same sort of way but he's the one doing all of this to her and then she's split from the parent that she is actually closest to just all of that um is is heartbreaking and yes um i I do think, Claudia, that 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 part of Mary's behaviour, um, when she's older, maybe a big part of it is to do with how she was treated by her father Henry. Yes, great question. Thank you. Um, Marion's got a question. Do you know what happened to the Queen's jewels? Last I remember reading about them was they were taken away from Queen Catherine after Henry VIII's death. So uh, uh, Catherine Parr, presumably, the Queen's jewels. Um, well, if they are the Crown's jewels, I don't know specifically. And actually, um, uh, I do know someone I could ask, of course. Uh, Nicola Tallis has written a book about, about the jewels. Um, I imagine they would have gone back to the, uh, the Crown, back to um, that point oh they went to Seymour's didn't they wasn't there something about Edward Seymour Lord Protector his wife having them I think there was something there wasn't there it's not my wheelhouse I'm afraid to talk about the jewels although that is um that is a very good question I think there was something to do with um the Lord Protector's um wife getting them uh, Maria asks I wonder if the coronation will be televised internationally live in the same manner Oh, I imagine. I imagine it will be. Um, of course, it will be streamed within the UK or if they'll omit parts of it for international audiences. I don't know. I imagine you will be able to see it covered. Um, the BBC, um, of course, will cover it live. Um, yeah, I'm sure you can get the lot somewhere as long as you've got a good internet connection. Um. Okay, so, um, oh, sorry, is Yeah, 
sorry if I've pronounced that incorrectly, is it true that Charles III has approved uh, a new investigation into the princes in the tower? I read news in Go- that news in Google randomly. Well, actually, funny you should ask that because we covered that a few weeks ago. Um, one of my patrons sent me a, a an article um, about it and actually that he'd, it was buried. This, this, there was... It was buried in a bigger story about the, the the royal family and actually the sort of the the issues between the um, Sussexes and da, da, da. anyway, and it was buried in there that he'd now decided not to support or not to allow an investigation into the bones um, uh, that are supposed to be of the princes in the tower. They are interred in Westminster Abbey. They're actually interred in the same. Um, chapel as uh elizabeth I and mary and mary the first the two sisters um so and, and i think the this is all the i haven't seen it anywhere else but the um the inside scoop was supposed to be about the fact that actually um he's now got more information he's been given more information about what could they actually discover should they uh should they effectively disturb this grave um and uh, and and that it's not going to be a good enough um conclusive um investigation that they can warrant um you we are i i actually the more i talk about this i feel feel more and more strongly that they should not be disturbed um it is a grave uh, it is a grave of children and we are just curious this is not an investigation that's going to lead to um, anything other than to somehow satisfy our curiosity. And I, I, to me personally, I think it is a it's it would set a precedent. I think people who think that slippery slope arguments are to be dismissed are dismissing themselves. How much breaking a precedent will does lead to other things happening that you may not want to happen. Um, it won't tell you how, it might not tell you who they are. It might, but it might not. It won't tell you how they died and it won't tell you who killed them. Um, so I, for one, hope that um, that he he does say no. Um, uh, we did, I did talk, uh, interestingly, I talked about, this to Susie Edge, um, another interview that you can see on my YouTube channel that we did recently. Um, she's fantastic. She's so fun. She is. Uh, she's actually a medical doctor turned historian. So she talks a lot about. Um, well, she's she's just done a book um, called uh, Mortal Monarchs, and that was what I was interviewing her about with all the deaths of all the uh, of all the English and subsequently British monarchs. And we talk about that, actually. So um, she has a different view to me. So you might want to have a look at that. Um, where are we? So uh, Beverly, well done. She's finished Blood, Fire and Gold now. Fantastic. That's our next um, book in the book club. Um, Marion, yes, the Lord Protector's wife took them. But that's the last I uh, heard of them. Was wondering if Mary or Elizabeth ever used them as their mothers would have. I think they were taken off Um I think they were taken back. I can't remember the story now. Sorry, Marion, I can't remember it off the top of my head. Um, I think they were taken back. I don't think they were lost at that point. Of course, lots of them have been lost because of the um, civil wars. Um, and I, but there is a pearl or a set of pearls in one of the crowns. I'm straight. I'm 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 delving into my memory banks now. But that that possibly did belong to um to Elizabeth I and therefore possibly Anne Boleyn I'm making a lot of possibilities there I realize uh, Linda says there are television channels that will show the coronation in full but you will have to get it pretty early <laughs> yes that's the other thing yeah um Claudia you're more than welcome um yes so that's um yeah, you will. That's the, just the thing, the uh, the time difference. Maria says, perfectly agree. Not like it's a very recent case where the perpetrator could be punished, etc. Exactly. That's that's my feelings on it. I think if, yeah, I, at the end of the day, to me, it's quite clear cut. We're digging up a grave for our curiosity. And that, um, that to me, 
um, actually is a hard no. Um, Lottie Rose says, I've always been quite on the fence about it. Recently started to agree more that the grave should be left alone. But what do you think of the John Evans theory about Edward V? Well, Lottie, you'll have to fill me in on John Evans' theory about Edward V and then I can tell you. Um, um, fan Fan Chow, can we watch this later again? My daughter is eight. Oh, hello. Welcome. Um, is at school. Oh, I say, but would love to have listened to the show. Yes, absolutely. So this show, um, you can find it on YouTube, Facebook and Instagram. It's all still there and you can listen to the podcast. If you want a link to all of these um, that just goes directly to your inbox, so it's all easy peasy. And if you've missed anything over the week, including the History After Dark session that I do with the other girls, then if you go to my Substack, which is free to sign up to, um, I'm Philippa B. Dot substack dot com. Philippa with one L and two P's. Jenna, I plan on being up pretty early on coronation morning. Jenna, I hope you're baking. I'm sure you will be baking. You're going to have baked. I know you will have done. Um, <clears throat> Dorothy says, I'm so glad um, Charles, he was convinced not to proceed with it. I agree or with all the reasons against against it, as you said. Yeah. Rebecca, good morning. How are you doing? So um, thank you for those questions. I really enjoy being asked questions. Thank you so much. Ooh, hopefully my um, comments on Instagram haven't frozen. Type something so I can see whether it's coming up the screen. Um, right, so that's two speakers down, two speakers for the uh, Tudors Online History Festival in November. Um, oh, there you go, Jenna. She's going to bake scones for breakfast. Of course. Of oh, course, scones. That's very good. Very good idea. I oh, I know what I can tell you about. Um, I'll come back to it. But it just reminded me of the scones because I had afternoon tea dressed as Tudor royalty. Um, Lisa's got a cuppa. Cheers, cheers, my dears. Um, uh, yes, yeah, so, so dressed as a Tudor. I was in purple on on Sunday. Samantha Reese uh, um, dressed dressed me and Cat and Catherine. Uh, we were at Thornbury Castle. We did the draw for her. Um, we did the draw for her. Uh, um, uh, sorry, for her prize draw, which was to win a bespoke gown. <gasps> do you know? I want. I do want my own gown. I just can't decide what color. I've now worn a uh, like a fire orange one, a, um, a, a like icy blue one, a purple one. I have no idea which one I would. I don't know what color I would ask for. Melissa, so excited to wear a dress. Yes, yes. Um, Samantha's getting them all ready. She's making some new ones, actually, but they're all fabulous. Um, uh, Amy's going to watch Coronation Day from. Yeah, you got to get up early and get and get and get watching. Um, oh, Lottie's going to the Glastonbury Abbey Medieval Fair. No, I wanted to go. That's this weekend, isn't it? Um, looks amazing I don't think I can oh got me thinking now whether I can make it I love Glastonbury Abbey went for the first time last year it's brilliant love it um the fact that we have a medieval fair is just wonderful uh, Rebecca saw the picture of us on Instagram yes yeah, so if any of you want to have a look at what we we're up to on Sunday um go to history.after.dark on Instagram and we've got uh, got some questions uh, some photos um Thank you, Mayfair Forest Witch. All three of us looked gorgeous. We were, we weren't, they were, yeah, we weren't ladylike. Well, I was, maybe. Um, Silkworm and Cottontails, did you see Harvington Hall last night in connection with baking bread? No, I need, I need, I don't watch TV. <laughs> it's not really bad. I watched it when, when one of you guys say, have a look at this. I go looking for something, but I, um, although I did watch, of course, the Last Kingdom film, uh, which is which was only out on Thursday, Thursday, is that Friday? Anyway, I've already watched it. Brilliant. Um, uh, Rebecca, I just miss being in London at the same time as the coronation, but you won't have to worry about the crowds. Indeed, Brianna. Hello, good morning. So, right, where are we at? So, we already have two speakers that I've told you about. For the Tudors Online History Festival, Tracy Borman and Joanne Paul, um, Estelle Peronk. So anyone who is 
part of our Patreon at the moment. You you'll be reading and you and you want to be part of book club. Of course, we're reading Estelle's book at the moment, Blood, Fire, and Gold. Estelle, who is just I just love her to bits. She is going to be doing a talk at our online history festival as well. Um, uh, so that's going to be um, incredible. Estelle is um, she, she's a historian. She's she's a, she's a French lady, and she can she's got this different perspective in terms of she can um, has and does and can access. Um, sort of the French court records from a different it's just it's another a bit like the House of Dudley is another viewpoint into the Tudors um, Estelle's uh, the, the, what Estelle's able to do looking at the Tudors as well is um, is fascinating so Estelle's going to be doing a talk for us as well um, Gareth Russell will be back um, giving us a, giving us a talk for the Tudors Online History Festival Gareth um is a um but he's 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 a fantastic historian he's on all the tours with me he is my tour historian linda um estelle will be speaking on the september tour she will she will so in september linda's on this tour we have the elizabeth the first and mary queen of scots tour and indeed yes estelle will be coming along to speak on that tour so the um that tour still has some spaces and bookings are still open. The other two are full and uh, or uh, the bookings have been closed. But if you want to come in September, have a look at that um, itinerary because it's it's fabulous. But I'm not repeating it next year. So um, because there's other things we want to be doing. So, um, yes, Estelle will be on that. And of course, Gareth, because Gareth is is the tour historian Um and the other exciting thing about Gareth, uh, that Gareth's going to do on all the tours this year is he has a book coming out, it's a bit of an aside, but he has a book coming out on the history of Hampton Court Palace through the people who, or the people who lived at Hampton Court Palace. Um, and he's going to be reading an extract from his book uh, on the tours. So that is a proper exclusive as well. Um Cat, Cat's going to be talking to us now. Cat Marchant, Dr. Cat, who I do history after dark with, she is behind. Well, she is reading the past on YouTube. She has a phenomenally huge uh, YouTube channel, and she's actually a Shakespeare scholar. So she is going to be doing a talk around about about Shakespeare and probably the first folio. So, um, like I said, the talk titles are still to be confirmed, but she'll be talking around uh, around that topic. Um. And then the the final speaker um, is Professor James Clark, who has just written a book on the dissolution of the monasteries. I've spoken to you a little bit about this before. I have got an interview with him coming out as well soon. Um, he gave me so much time and it was enthralling. Whatever you think you know about the dissolution of the monasteries, if you've not read his book, just reserve... Um, <laughs> reserve your thought process I don't know uh pick up the book watch the interview that I'm I've done with him when uh if you if you sign up to my sub stack you'll you'll or you watch me here you'll know when it goes live um and just open your mind up to to what actually happened it's different I think different in in pretty much every respect to what we um kind of think of happen with the dissolution of the monasteries dissolution of the monasteries is kind of i think a um bolt on to the story of henry the eighth the reformation and berlin the breakdown of the marriage of henry and catherine of aragon um and it that does that just doesn't serve um to understand it in at all really um so really really looking forward to you seeing that interview it, the only reason it's not out yet is because he did give me so much time it is all gold and so I need to um I just need longer to edit it because there's so much of it but talking so so that's sorry that's the six uh they're the six speakers for the Tudors online history festival the tickets are already on sale uh, in fact for ease on Facebook and YouTube the, uh, that's the, where you can get your tickets from. So you go to the Tudors 2023eventbrightcouk You can follow the link in my bio from Instagram. 
um, to get to to the tickets and you can get them. You can also buy bundles of the talks from the last two festivals if you miss them, the Georgians and the Stuarts. Um, so they're the, they're the six, Tracy Borman, um, uh, Joanne Paul, Estelle Peronk, Gareth Russell, Kat Marchant and James Clark. Now, there's also two live events as part of the weekend. The uh, Historian Panel and this year, this time, should I say, it will be the speakers. It will be all six speakers. Um, for the last two, it's been uh, historians from that period. Uh, and if some of the speakers could make it, they came along. It's going to be the speakers. So you will have a live session where you can put your questions to Tracy Borman, to Estelle Pronk, to Jerome Paul, Gareth Russell, Dr. Cat, and James Clark. So um, that will be I'm really, really looking forward to that. We're going to give it a little bit more of a, of a window. We're going to have an hour and a half rather than an hour. So it will be a um, <clears throat> chance for you to ask your questions. And that will be followed by, of course, our closing fun quiz. Because you've got to have some fun as well, haven't you? Um, right. Sorry, the, uh, the, 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 the comments had frozen a little bit. So let's have a look. Um, yeah, Jenna would like a dress too. Yeah, exactly. It's a hard time deciding what colour. Um, what we're going to have? Lottie Rose is going to dress as Margaret of Anjou. Should do, absolutely. Please invite Natalie Dormer for a live Instagram. She's an amazing actress. Yeah, well, yeah. Um, that would be nice. I don't, I've never, I've not seen her be interviewed actually. Maybe she would do it. Um, uh, yes. So thank you for, um, Lottie Rose reminded me about the Glastonbury Glastonbury Medieval Fair. Um, so, uh, Maria, speaking of Coronation Weekend, will I be attending or live streaming it? No, because I'm, I'm nowhere near it. Um, but um, there is definitely going to be a lot of coverage. Gareth, um, Gareth is going to be um, uh, on um, one of the um programs doing it i'll find out which one um if you have tr so last for the um excuse me for the session council i did do a live stream for my patrons because i was aware that that wouldn't be something necessarily that was internationally um broadcast i don't think you're going to have the same issue with the coronation um but uh we might have to play that one, but I'm actually planning on, I'm hoping it's going to be sunny and I'm planning on going down um, to some event. <laughs> That's what I'm hoping will happen. Claudia, to become a patron, if you go to um, www.patreon, so that's P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com forward slash British history. So it's www.patreon.com forward slash British british history it's five pounds a month um so that would be cool um uh it's oh it's you uh it's 7 30 where, where are you oh you're so you're six hours ahead in indonesia thank you for joining us all the way from indonesia um maria i practically had a party when you uh, early announced you would be having gareth and kat for the tudor summit too they are so brilliant aren't they so brilliant. Uh, Mayfair Forest Witch, any plans for Gareth to be Had's guest again? He was my favourite guest. Yes. Um, it, so Gareth is, I mean, he loves, he, he would love to come on History After Dark. He's so busy at the moment because uh, with the, um, I, suppose, I think really with the death of the Queen last year um, and then he, he, I mean, because he's brilliant at, at all of this sort of um he understands convention he understands everything that should happen um he's he's incredibly great commentator so he he was pulled in and pulled in more and more as well with the kind of sussex's um uh, ongoing saga with that so uh, and then of course you've now got coronation so he's just he's really really busy of course i'm going to see him on tour very soon um but yes yeah, so i will i will I will dig him and see if we can get him back on had at some point. Um, Bethany is going to Hampton Court Palace soon. Enjoy yourself. I'm sure you will um, love it. Lottie Rose, Dr. Cat, legend. Ledge. Indeed. Um, 
Marie, uh, Maria, what, what book was I talking about there? can't remember. Duchess Jodie, thank you for my badge. Thank you so much. Um, I forgot to mention badges, so you can support me. I mean, obviously, I'd love you to be along onto Patreon because I can give back a lot. But if you just want to purely support me and in this um, free like free stuff that I do, um, you can buy me badges on Instagram, Super Chats on YouTube and Stars on Facebook. Um, Linda says, I've read the coronation um, at the Abbey starts at 11 our time but I've not heard when they will start the procession. No, I don't know, actually. I need to have a look. I apologise. I'm not actually uh, brilliantly up on modern stuff. <laughs> not things that are happening right now. <laughs> I like to stay safely in the past. Um, Maria says, um, the session council was so exciting for me. Thank you again for that Patreon stream. You are more than welcome. When I realised you wouldn't get to see it, Um that's what I wanted to do. Hello, Kichap in Uganda. Welcome. Um, uh, Melissa, it was the Tudor Summit speakers. Is that what I was saying? Um, so, yeah, so just as a recap then, so we've got Tracy Borman, um, uh, Joanne Paul, Estelle Peronk, Gareth Russell, Kat Marchant and James Clark. It's going to be an incredible lineup. Um, so the way it works is over the weekend, there will be the, the the talks will go live over a, a, a set sort of schedule, which you'll already know in advance. And then we have the two live events, um, which even if you can't make, if you can't make the Q&A, you can pre-submit a question as well. And then you will be able to access the recording of it until the end of January. Um, Beverly, I've got two of Gareth Russell's books reserved at the library. Can't wait to get them. Catherine Howard and the one on the Queen Mother. Oh, well, you are going to love both of those. I can guarantee you. In fact, it's, isn't it just brilliant when you find an author that you know, if you pick up a book, you're going, whether it's fiction or nonfiction, especially on the nonfiction side, you know, it's going to be well researched, but, um, but you know, you can trust um, who, who you're reading and you're going to enjoy it. Gareth is, is, is someone like that we've just reviewed his titanic book in book club that was our first book in the patreon historic book club um and i think everyone basically agreed that any book that you pick up from gareth is going to be worthwhile but his gareth russell's book on Catherine howard his biography of her really is the biography of Catherine howard um and his book on the queen mother do let's have another drink uh is just a fantastic way of looking at an incredible woman's life so it's 101 anecdotes one for every year of her life um or for every birthday and um uh, it's a really really good way of doing it um but yeah you'll you'll you will enjoy that very very much um uh maria i really feel i could listen to cat and gareth talk for hours as they have so much knowledge you too thank you very much you always have such wonderful intellect uh, intelligent insights broadening my point of view on such pivotal historical events well thank you very much that's that is actually my aim not necessarily to tell i don't want to tell anyone what to think about anything i want to open up your mind um the interview i've just done with julian uh, Humphreys on the Battle of Tewkesbury which as a as patrons you'll get slightly earlier than everybody else I'm going to uh, publish it in time for the anniversary the 6th of May um, we talked about um, or I had a question about I think I've mentioned it earlier about whether the Battle of Bosworth about whether Henry Tudor's actual um, where he comes in whether that should be termed as being part of the Wars of the Roses or not and uh, I go in to explain why I question that. Um, Brianna says, I enjoyed the Stuart Summit. I'm looking forward to the Tudor one. It's going to be fabulous. You're going to love it. Um, Linda, Gareth seems to be able to speak on any topic. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know how. I don't know how. You know, when you, you speak, but they're so knowledgeable. How have you had time to, like, have you, in your, I don't think in one lifetime I could have, um, the in-depth knowledge it's 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 incredible um and i'm very very happy to know him and work with him it's fantastic so um any history after dark fans uh what i, sh I need to mention to you is we're not live tonight we are going live tomorrow night this week it was that or have to um cancel it so we have switched the night so we are talking on history after dark we're 
<clears throat> and history after dark is on YouTube and Instagram, history dot after dot dark on Instagram, and then history underscore history un- uh, history, sorry, underscore after underscore dark on YouTube. Sorry about that, it's what handles we could get. Um the uh the topic this week, the the candidate in our deceased git series is Richard the First, Richard the Lionheart, Richard Cordelion. Um We'll be going into his life. So that's tomorrow night, same time, quarter past eight um, in the evening UK time. So if you are a History After Dark fan, um, apologies if that messes up your week a little bit, but at least we can um, we can get on and do it this week. Um, Maria says, I like it because it sometimes prompts me to notice details I may not have noticed or just look at stuff from another perspective, which is so useful. Absolutely, I agree. I like it when people do it to me. Um, yeah, so we've got a bit of uh, networking going on in the chat. Very good. Um, so, yeah, so History After Dark tomorrow night. Join us. Um, it's not tonight. It's tomorrow night this this week. Um, Beverly, I'm getting so many recommendations for books from yourself and had authors I'd not heard of. I'm going to come to the Tudor Summit. Yes, do, 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 do. Also hoping to start an open university history degree in October. Fantastic. I'm in awe. Um, I'm sure it would be a lot of work. I'm sure it would be be absolutely fantastically enjoyable. So, um, interesting. James Clark, who I said about, um, he's he's talking at the Tudor Festival, and he is uh, he's done an interview with me. So we will, but you'll get to see that soon. He's a lecturer uh, at uh, the University of Exeter, and I thought I would go back to university if I knew the lecturers were going to be like him. I would go back to university, uh, absolutely. Um, uh, um, Marianne, Marianne, sorry, can we ask questions on History After Dark, like here? Yeah, well, you can, well, sort of, you can, but because we're talking about a particular topic and the times it always seems to go so quickly, um, if it's relevant to what we're talking about, yes, it's a bit more difficult to do general. If you have a History After Dark question, just DM us, um, and uh. If it, you know, if it's not directly related to what we're talking about that night, Lottie Rose, I like to think of Bosworth as being part of the Wars of the Roses. As for me, that's Henry Tudor getting some kind of justice for Henry the Sixth and Margaret and their boy. Well, that's what we go into, ish, in there. I don't think that was why. I don't think that's what he was doing, um, at all, actually. So, um, but yeah, I do, I do explain myself a bit more in in that interview, um. So, uh, so you'll be able to, well, if you're in the Patreon version, you'll be able to see that. You've got to remember with Henry the seventh, he, um, well, and, 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 and Henry the eighth and I mean, Elizabeth, they are incredible at propaganda and the reason they, they need to be incredible at propaganda. They are always looking for evidence of legitimacy of why they need to be there. What a good cause. What a good cause. Um, Yeah. So, uh, Maria, get on Gareth to also promote his own new book too, by the way, not just the other historians' new books, uh, which is wonderful of him. Yeah, so um, I will be interviewing Gareth about his new book, about this one about the uh, history of the people uh, from Hampton Court Palace. Um. (laughs) <laughs> Lottie Rose, I know he was almost certainly using it as an excuse, but that's good enough for me. <laughs> Love it. I'm so dark on the screen. Am I dark on everyone else's screen? I'm going to put myself up a little bit. Oh, sorry. Shouldn't mess with my settings while I'm live. Um, yeah, it's <laughs> a bad positive. So um, oh, I'm going to have more to tell you about um, 2024 tours soon as well. Um which will all tie into to what we're talking about as well. So, um, uh, and some other sort of shorter things as well. So we've obviously have on our online festivals and talking about maybe doing some shorter tours as well. So that they're more within sort of people's price bracket. Um, so, uh, yeah, anyway, I'll in on all of that kind of stuff as we go. So, um, everyone, thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, I hope you can join history after dark 
tomorrow night, this week, Thursday night, just to throw a spanner in the works. But we are talking about Richard uh, the Lionheart um, and uh, and his crusading and his six months in the in the country, etc., etc., etc. We will decide on how much of a git he is. Um, and it will be a fun discussion. It always is. So love to love to join you to join us tomorrow night. You can join me again live next week. Uh, I will be talking about Tutbury Castle because I am having a little visit there in between times. And um, yeah, we'll have lots to talk about. So everyone, thank you so much. Um, yeah, I'm glad you woke up in time, Rebecca too. Thank you, Heidi. Have a great day, everybody. Um, and a great week. Hopefully I will see you tomorrow night, if not next week. All right. See you soon. Bye-bye.